order. You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man. Its most senior lawyer has been suspended. Hours later, news that another leading counsel had resigned. All this at the inquiry set up to get to the truth of widespread child abuse allegations across the country's public institutions. An inquiry which has already lost three chairpersons. Victims say it's devastating. So, what does this mean for the future of this multi-million pound, two-year-long investigation? Here's our senior Home Affairs correspondent, Simon Israel. Britain's largest ever public inquiry has yet again lurched into crisis. Its chief lawyer, Ben Abbasson QC, is now suspended, under investigation for what and for how long has not been disclosed, least of all, apparently, to him. Some survivors' groups describe it as a catastrophe. It's devastating. And I will say this, when they had the investigation into Lambeth many years ago, when that failed, people committed suicide. This is how serious this is, and I, I just don't get that people are taking this seriously enough, that you're leading people to believe they're going to get justice, they're going back through their backstory, reliving the nightmares again, just to watch this farce. Awful. Ben Emerson's been described as a Goliath in the area of human rights. His CV certainly reflects that. A United Nations Special Rapporteur on Counterterrorism, a British judge at the International Criminal Court. He defeated the UK government over detention without trial and defeated the MOD over discrimination against homosexuals in the armed forces. So will the child abuse inquiry lose teeth if his suspension becomes dismissal? I just hope that if, God forbid, that is to happen, that a replacement is found. This inquiry is by no means just about one person or a handful of people. It's a massive undertaking. This evening, things got even worse when it emerged that another of the inquiry's lawyers, Elizabeth Prochaska, a colleague of Mr Emerson's, had quit. And amid this turmoil, an inquiry statement attempted to reassure all those it was set up to help. We are aware that recent events are unsettling, particularly for victims and survivors of child sexual abuse and all those who are engaged with the inquiry's work. It has been said that the inquiry is in crisis. This is simply not the case. After two years, the inquiry has yet to hear evidence in any of its 13 separate investigations into failing institutions, ranging from churches to councils to government itself. In that time, though, it's lost three chairwomen and now possibly its most senior lawyer. But the one thing that has remained are the inquiry's ambitious terms of reference. When those terms of reference were set, they were agreed with victims and survivors. And it's victims and survivors who are at the heart of this inquiry. For too many years, too many people have been raising their voice, uh, saying what has happened to them, and people have not been listening. The inquiry is at pains to point out that this latest friction is not about its scope, but about the conduct of its chief lawyer. However, yet again, the central issue remains as to just what this multi-million pound independent inquiry is supposed to be about and whether it can really deliver justice to so many victims and so many survivors going back so many years. Channel 4 News understands that the current chair, Professor Alexis J, is nearing the end of a review that will determine the future of this beleaguered inquiry. Simon Israel and victims whose cases are being investigated by the Independent Inquiry into Sexual Abuse faced another blow today. With more on that, Ed Hauker is with me. He's been looking into the events at the Knollview Residential School in Rochdale for some time. Ed. Well, so I've spoken to pupils from the Knollview Residential School today and they're incredibly angry because Greater Manchester Police have decided to end their investigation looking into abuse allegations at the school. You may remember Knollview School was founded by Cyril Smith and allegations have swirled that pupils there were abused in the 70s, 80s and 90s. Well, tonight and today, the CPS and Greater Manchester Police will bring charges against just one uh, man. 
In the meantime, pupils feel incredibly upset about that, and their only hope, really, is that the independent inquiry into sexual abuse will examine their uh, claims. That's the good news. But after today's news, I suppose it's the bad news as well. Cyril Smith looms large over Rochdale again tonight. After his death, Greater Manchester Police acknowledged the overwhelming evidence that the local MP had sexually and physically abused young boys and began investigating offences committed at Knoll View, a residential school for vulnerable boys that he was allowed to found. But the MP was not the only person alleged to have abused boys at the school. Internal council reports from the 1990s state that boys as young as eight were sexually active and that on one night, another alleged abuser gained access to the school. The staff were not there and he abused boys on the premises. Phil Taylor, a health worker, filed the first report, alarmed that boys were prostituting themselves in the town centre. People were coming away from as far away as Yorkshire, Sheffield. They knew about what was going on, abusing these boys and it was just continuing. It wasn't being stopped. Today, Greater Manchester Police said they were dropping their investigation into Norview after referring allegations involving 27 suspects to the CPS. They say there is insufficient evidence to prosecute all but one man. Other alleged abusers are dead. A social worker at Norview says the pupils were failed, first by the school and again by police. Martin Deegan says it's now up to them to find justice. If police inquiries can no longer continue wasting public money, then the individuals who've got cases with Slater and Gordon and other people, uh, uh, solicitors in Manchester and thereabouts, might now be able to take their cases to the High Court and be heard, and then this documentation will come out, and then the truth will come out, and then they, maybe, just maybe, there'll be some justice for, for the lads that are still alive, because we don't, remember, a number are dead. Well, we're joined now from Edinburgh by Ian McFadden. He suffered abuse whilst a student at Caldicott School in Buckinghamshire and is a participant in this inquiry. And Labour MP Chukramuna, a member of the Home Affairs Select Committee, who is also standing to be the committee's next chair. Uh, Ian McFadden, what's your reaction to what's happened today? It must feel like another hammer blow. Well, John, I'm personally, I'm, I'm really very angry. Um, I hear people who supposedly advocate for survivors saying that this is a hiccup. This, this is not a hiccup. This is, this is a meltdown um, and it's wholly unacceptable. You, you know, the, the inquiry may well be putting out press releases that, that, that they're not in crisis, but I can assure you with the survivors that I've spoken to, they're in crisis with what's going on today. Well, now, has your contact with this committee made any sense? Have you felt that it had a potential to deliver? Well, I, I'm, I'm awaiting for my strand uh, within, within the inquiry to, to be put forward so I can apply for core participant status. Um, but, uh, you know, at this rate, the way we're going forward, I may well be drawing my pension quicker than I actually get uh, core participant status. Your very use of the phrase, I'm waiting for the strand, suggests it's an immensely complicated process even to line up what they're going to do. <laughs> It may well be, John, but we, none of this is rocket science. If we look towards Australia, um, Australia ha has an inquiry which is being regarded as really highly successful, and it's as complex and complicated as our inquiry. Um, you know, if, if it needs to be broken down into smaller pieces, so be it, but the terms of references currently are non-negotiable. Well, Chukaramuna, that's really where you come in, because your committee is going to question the new chair of the uh, Committee of Inquiry. Um, and, and I'm wondering, do, do you feel the whole thing needs reconfiguring or what? I think there does need to be some reconfiguring. My principal interest in this is actually that many of the survivors from the Shirley Oates Survivors Group in your package are constituents of mine. So I've been following this now for the last couple of years. But for the inquiry to say, well, look, there isn't a crisis, it's not credible to suggest that this is a properly functioning inquiry. It's dysfunctional. When you lose three chairs, you're now on to your fourth. You lose your lead counsel. Well, he has been suspended. He was told he was suspended through learning of it by the internet. It doesn't seem he was told. You lose the second most senior lawyer, Elizabeth Prochaska, as well. 
it might not be a crisis, but it's incredibly dysfunctional. And I think that these short statements we've seen on the inquiry's website are not enough. Um, Alexis Jay, the professor who is leading the inquiry, she is due to be giving evidence to the Home Affairs Select Committee in the middle of October. But frankly, I think we need a much fuller statement from her as to what is going to happen with the lead counsel of the inquiry. Obviously, they're investigating that, but how long is he going to be suspended for? How does it affect the inquiry's work? Will the second lead counsel, Elizabeth Prochaska, who, by the way, actually it appears resigned effective from the 15th of September, we've only just learnt about it now, is somebody going to replace her? And then in terms of the overall structure, one of the things that Professor Jay's predecessor, Lewell Goddard, referred to was just the sheer, the sheer size of it. And I think this is one of the reasons why perhaps a proper federal structure for the inquiry needs to be instituted, where we currently have 13 different investigations which are the subject of the inquiry. Well, why not turn those into 13 mini-inquiries with a proper named head who can lead for that part of the country that it refers to? So, for example, the one that's dealing with Lambeth, you could have a head of the inquiry for Lambeth, and then Professor Jay could lead coming up with the overall national recommendations and conclusions of the inquiry. That might m help it make it a bit more manageable, and perhaps that's what she's looking into in her review. But do you sense that these resignations and the suspension may be exactly about that, about how they go forward, how they structure going forward? And do you have a view on whether, for example, Mr Emerson should indeed be desuspended? Well, I, I th I'm not sure it would be appropriate for me to, contact, uh, to comment on that without knowing exactly why he has been suspended. They deny, by the way, John, that the reason that he has left, well, he hasn't left, of course, the reason he's been suspended is because he disagrees with the whole way that the inquiry is being run. Um, but, I mean, this investigation needs to happen very quickly. I mean, of course, for him, he is a deputy high court judge. If he's not seen as being fit conducting the inquiry, then for him personally, that has implications, which is why he has instructed lawyers to no. act on his behalf, it would seem, in respect of his suspension. Well, Ian McFadden, what does it feel like as a survivor um, simply to have this extraordinary swirl going on at the top and really absolutely nothing changing your life in the bottom? Can I be wholly honest with you, John? I, I've been dealing with this inquiry um, for the last two and a half years. It, it has consumed my life. There are a few people who I have met along the way. Ben Emerson is one of them. Um, he is a man who has all the skill set to be doing the job that he's been employed to do. Um, people ask me, is this, is this the establishment trying to undermine um, the credibility or, or the ability for this inquiry to step forward? Two years ago, I would have said that there were conspiracy theorists who came up with this. Now, I'm beginning to doubt. You know, at, at what stage is this an independent inquiry? As far as I can understand, the secretariat and the head of the secretariat were, were ex um, ex-civil servants from the Home Office. They were, one of them was an employee for, from Theresa May's office. You know, at what stage are we going to have an inquiry that's fit for survivors' purpose and that isn't going to keep re-traumatising people who were terribly abused in their childhood? Ian McFadden, thank you very much indeed, and I'm sorry to put you through that, but thank you very much. And Chukra Muna, thank you very much indeed. We'll look to see what your committee comes up with next week. Ever since it was set up, the big inquiry into child abuse in England and Wales has had trouble hanging on to its officials. Three chairwomen, no less, have come and gone, and last night its leading lawyer was suspended. Now, a second lawyer has gone, jumped, not pushed this time. That forced the Prime Minister, who set up the inquiry when she was Home Secretary, to come out fighting. She's determined, it seems, to make sure it goes ahead as planned. A day that was meant to show her support for the armed forces. Instead, the Prime Minister found herself having to defend the child sex abuse inquiry, which she set up. For all its failings, and there have been many, she spoke passionately about why she still backs it. For too many years, too many people have been raising their voice, uh, at saying what has happened to them, and people have not been listening. They've not been taken seriously. We need to investigate. We need to learn the lessons from the past. If we don't do that, ha we can't guarantee that we're going to be able to stop such abuse from happening in the future. This is a really important inquiry.
But there's little doubt that inquiry is in crisis again following the suspension of this man, Ben Emerson, senior counsel, and the revelation tonight that another lawyer, Elizabeth Prochaska, has quit. In a statement about Mr. Emerson, a spokesman said the inquiry has recently become very concerned about aspects of Mr. Emerson's leadership of the council team. He has therefore been suspended from duty so that these can be properly investigated. I do not see how this can do anything other than compromise the time it will take for this inquiry to do its work. That is why we need a full and comprehensive explanation as to why Mr Emerson has been suspended, but most importantly, what is its effect going to be on the work of the inquiry? All this as the inquiry is now on its fourth chair. Three chosen by Theresa May either quit or were dismissed, a failure she clearly felt personally. It is obviously very disappointing that we do not yet have a panel chairman, and for that I want to tell survivors that I am sorry. Today, the Prime Minister expressed her confidence in the new chair, Alexis J. But victims groups say they're extremely concerned at the prospect of further delay. It's devastating. And I will say this, when they had the investigation into Lambeth many years ago, when that failed, people committed suicide. This is how serious this is. And I, I just don't get that people are taking this seriously enough, that you're leading people to believe they're going to get justice. They're going back through their backstory, reliving the nightmares again, just to watch this farce. Not something the Prime Minister seems to think is acceptable either. Libby Vina, News at 10, Westminster. There is a huge problem at the very top of the child abuse inquiry again. The day after the lead QC, Ben Emerson, was suspended, he claimed he'd only found out on the internet. Today we learned that the junior counsel and human rights specialist, Elizabeth Porcheska, resigned on the 15th of this month. And in the last few minutes, we've learned that Emerson himself has now resigned. We can reveal details of these events, which suggest that, though Theresa May said today she was very confident in the leadership of the inquiry under its fourth head, Professor Alexis Jay, there has been a breakdown of relations. Here's Jake Morris. When Westminster orders a major inquiry, they rarely run completely smoothly. They can take a very long time, often grappling with controversial issues, and they can cost a fortune. But few have run into quite as much trouble as the Independence Inquiry into child sexual abuse. Arriving for work this morning, the current chair of the inquiry, Professor Alexis Jay. She's the fourth the inquiry has had in little over two years. And in the last 45 minutes, the news that Ben Emerson, the inquiry's most senior lawyer, has resigned. In a statement, Professor Jay said, I have today accepted Ben Emerson QC's resignation from the role of counsel to the inquiry. Mr Emerson has stepped down at this time because he considers that after two years at the helm, it is now time for someone else to take the role forward and provide leadership for the council team. There is no truth in suggestions that he has resigned due to a difference of opinion with me about the next steps for the inquiry. He will continue to be available to the inquiry while his replacement is recruited and brought up to speed. I am pleased he continues to support the inquiry's aims and objectives. He has made an enormous contribution to the inquiry and we wish him well. Last night, Mr Emerson was suspended by the inquiry, prompted by concerns over his leadership of the Inquiry Council. And this afternoon, we learned that Mr Emerson's deputy, Elizabeth Prochaska, had resigned a fortnight ago from her role. There were some suggestions today that Mrs Prochaska's departure from the inquiry was entirely unrelated to last night's statement. However, Newsnight understands that not to be the case. Sources have told us there were serious problems in the working relationship between Mrs Prochaska and Ben Emerson. They were the two most senior lawyers on the inquiry. These were problems that prompted her sudden resignation and immediate departure a fortnight ago. And for Professor Jay, there is an added headache that the largest survivors group involved in the inquiry say they do not want her to directly oversee their hearings because of her background as a social worker. Today, an inquiry statement insisted there was no crisis. We are aware that recent events are unsettling, particularly for victims and survivors of child sexual abuse and all those who are engaged with the inquiry's work. It has been said that the inquiry is in crisis. This is simply not the case and the chair and panel are united in their determination to see this important work through to a conclusion. Others are very concerned. 
Well, the inquiry has issued a statement today saying they are not in crisis, but frankly it's simply not credible to claim that this is a properly functioning inquiry when it is now on to its fourth chair. The lead counsel has been suspended and apparently learnt of his suspension on the internet. The second most senior lawyer has resigned and actually it turns out resigned on the 15th of September. This is a dysfunctional inquiry and we need urgent reassurance by the chair that she is getting a grip of the situation. When is the lead counsel going to, well, when will the investigation into whatever he's supposed to have done be complete? This is beyond a hiccup. Um, you know, w within the last month and a half, we've lost our chair. We've now had the lead counsel suspended. Um, at, at what stage are people going to understand? This is, this is not about hiccups and issues that we can resolve. This is about examining why this inquiry is failing us as survivors. Newsnight understands Professor Jay has completed a review of the inquiry that she has been undertaking and that she is considering running parts of the 13th Strand inquiry in parallel. Bitter experience has left many survivors of child abuse hugely sceptical of official attempts to deliver justice. This was an inquiry that was never likely to run completely smoothly, but the events of the last 48 hours have been something nobody expected. Jake Morris, well, earlier this evening, before the news about Ben Emerson's resignation broke, I spoke to Andy Lavery from the abuse survivors group White Flowers Alba. I began by asking him for his reaction to Newsnight's revelations about the breakdowns in relations at the top of the inquiry. There's been a breakdown in relations if you're a survivor of the inquiry or if you're a core participant, because we don't have any relationship with the inquiry either, but I find it astonishing that this continues to happen. Um, tell me what your knowledge was of Ben Emerson. I was introduced to Ben Emerson by Theresa May back at one of the number of meetings I had with her and the Home Office who seemed to be running the inquiry as well as the inquiry staff and Ben Emerson from an early stage sought to reassure and step in but it really started back in January of last year when the Home Affairs Committee released derogatory emails about a number of survivors and remarks by then inquiry staff. So. And Mr Emerson handled that, took it over and sought to reassure ourselves and many behind us to continue to engage with the inquiry. So in fact since the beginning uh, Ben Emerson has been the constant throughout the different heads of the inquiry. Yes and he's also showed the utmost courtesy, professionalism and integrity but not only that he's subject matter and his knowledge of the nuances and what we face has been I wouldn't say it was so much breathtaking, but really reassuring. And that's what we need because all we've ever seen is crass and professionalism from day one. And tonight they say about listening to us, they still don't listen to us. It's, it's, it's absolutely galling. The language they use, it's all PR and they release it to the media. They never talk to us, they never tell us anything. But what's changed since we were children? And even the knowledge of a suspension, what impact has that had on uh, abuse survivors? Because I know that you are involved in a number of different uh, survivor groups. Well, it's just like when we were kids and he's being naughty and he's getting punished. It feels like just what's happened to us as children. You know, suspension, that's a school word. You know, I mean, get real, the man. It's, it's, it's shocking, you know, and it's, it's shocking how they do it. I mean, if the, the guy is a bit, the guy is under for serial and he's quite, you know, tough but at the end of the day you can't have a wallflower in charge of this and he should be in charge it should it should be him not jay that's the reality here you are clearly um a supporter of uh, ben emerson because you know he has been there from the beginning and he is deeply involved uh, did you know elizabeth uh, prochaska as well uh i attended i've only went to one preliminary hearing so f thus far and i saw her at the um preliminary hearing with the Catholic Church back in July and the whole atmosphere was a bit funny but obviously that was the very seven days before Justice mm. Goddard went and that was bad enough to bear but I, I, Ben Emerson emailed me yesterday and he said this has been tough on both of us. Mm -hmm. I 100% agree it has been tough, it's been tough on many and I'm worried about suicides and people losing heart and there seems to be whether it's towards the staff or the people taking part, brave survivors, there's no duty of care. They just don't get it. They still don't get it. Will they ever get it? I don't think so. Well, finally, uh, if you had something to say to Theresa May tonight, what would you say? 
Theresa May met myself and other survivors from across the country over a year ago. Now the door's shut, you need to reopen the door, you need to start talking to us. We have a demos, we represent others, vulnerable adults, not capable of articulating the, what happened to them as children. This isn't good enough. Less of the sound bites, meet with us, let's work this out. If they can do it in Australia, they can do it here. There are good staff in the inquiry, there are good ideas, but there's a lot of rubbish and there's a lot of people after our money. We need to sort this out, we need to, we need to sort it out now, we need to save lives, and as many lives as we can. Andy Leiby, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you.